Hey guys and welcome back to Everyday AI. This week we're going to be talking about something a little bit more personal. I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys about how I got into AI um, and how I got into research and so I thought I would do a quick vlog of sorts to go through kind of how I got from you know not knowing any programming at all um, to, to here where I'm doing AI research in grad school. So to start off, um, I went to a high school where we had AP Computer Science A, um, so I did take that. I can't really tell how useful it was, but I took that class in high school and I liked it. Um, I liked programming, we were learning in Java. For me, programming is kind of another language that I can use to speak to, in this case, machines. So as an undergrad, um, I went to Cornell and I was interested in engineering, but I wasn't sure what kind. I'd done research in high school in biomaterials, but Cornell didn't have an undergrad biomedical engineering when I applied, so I figured that I would do some other major, maybe electrical engineering um, or, or material science, and then figure out a way to do research in biomedical engineering or find a way to kind of make the major what I wanted it to be. Luckily for me, I got to Cornell and during my, I guess at the end of my freshman year, um, over that summer, when I had been staying on campus to do research in my lab, they announced that there would be a biomedical engineering major, and so I was able to pick up that major. One of the benefits of being in the first class is that Cornell has these like distribution requirements, um, and there's usually electives within your major, and so since we were first, we kind of got to pick what we wanted. Um, there wasn't really a formal list yet, and so that let me kind of shape my program um, towards the things that I was interested in. Now I mentioned I joined a lab over that first summer and I actually spent three years in a cartilage engineering lab so nothing to do with machine learning. Um, I was working with biomaterials and material science um, looking at ways to engineer the meniscus which is in your knee. Somewhere during my sophomore year, I think I realized that I was more interested in the data analysis that I'd been doing. We were using CT images, which are kind of medical imaging, um, to analyze some of our samples. And I really enjoyed the analysis that I was doing in MATLAB, um, which was another language that I picked up. Um, thanks to Alex, the grad student that I worked with, who asked me what languages I knew how to use, which at that time was basically Java, and then told me to do it in MATLAB. Um, so I started taking more programming classes. Um, the, the grad student that I worked with also realized pretty quickly that I was more interested in the computational end of things, and we didn't have a ton of people in the lab doing that. So when I asked to kind of make that pivot, um, it was actually welcomed and I started doing a lot more kind of computational analysis. And if it sounds like I'm being vague, um, for those of you not familiar with the academic publishing system, we actually have a paper that we submitted to a journal which is under review. Um, and so I can't really talk about the specifics um, until it's published because it's not public work yet. So the summer after my sophomore year, um, I kind of pursued that computational and medical imaging path a little bit more. I worked at Novartis with their clinical and translational imaging group um, on a bunch of different data analysis relating to preclinical trials and clinical trials. I was doing software validation for an external company that was looking to partner with Novartis. And so I think that that really helped me realize that I was still really interested in data analysis and computation, but I wasn't interested in it in industry, at least not at the entry level. Um, for me, I really enjoyed having that intellectual ownership that you get in academia where you kind of have your project and you work on all different facets of it. And so some parts of it may be computational and some parts of it might not be, but it's all yours. And, and that was something that I really missed. So my third summer, I went to Stanford. Um, at Stanford, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I was an Amgen Scholar, which is a summer research program focused on biomedical research. Um, they gave us our lab assignments about two weeks out. At that time, I had taken zero classes in machine learning, so I got the assignment and I was a little bit surprised. Um, it was definitely a cool looking project, but I had no background in machine learning. Um, and so that was really where I started to learn. So in the two weeks between getting my assignment and going to Stanford, um, I actually took Andrew Nigg's Coursera course um, on machine learning. And I'll put a screenshot here or put a link in the description box. 
So I spent that summer at Stanford um, looking at MRI reconstruction using machine learning. We ended up submitting a paper to a workshop at Neuralips, which is one of the big machine learning conferences. Um, I'll include a link to it below, but essentially what we were trying to do is look at MRI reconstruction and fixing errors in real time. I then spent the next year, my senior year of undergrad, picking up some smaller projects. So I took a neural engineering class where we had to do epilepsy classification. And then I was also applying to grad school. So I was applying to electrical engineering and biomedical engineering PhD programs. Um, and I ended up going here. Um, so my program is the PhD program in medical engineering and medical physics, which sounds super broad because it is. Um, it's run through MIT and Harvard Medical School. The overall, I guess, goal of our program is to teach PhD students to think like clinicians. Um, so because of that, we take all these MD classes. Um, I had to do an autopsy last semester. Um, and the idea is to kind of put us in the clinic, see what it's really like so that we can solve real problems that occur in the clinic and see real problems that people who work on um, engineering problems for medicine may not otherwise be aware of because they're just not in the room when it happens. So I got to grad school um, and I knew that I wanted to do something involving machine learning and electrical engineering for medicine. Um, I didn't really have a clinical focus, um, but I knew that I was interested in electrophysiological systems, so parts of the body that use electricity and in most cases that's either the heart or the brain. My program does rotations so you get to kind of try out labs before you commit. So my first rotation was fully in the media lab. Um, I was working in a lab called Camera Culture. They find new ways to see things and that's like a really broad statement but if you check out their website they really do a lot of different things. I ended up doing a second rotation um, which is the labs labs that I ended up staying in and that rotation was with the synthetic neurobiology group um, and so that's also a media lab group and then the neuroscience statistics research lab which is in brain and cognitive sciences but yeah so that's how I got to where I am now um, of course I also did a bunch of different AI projects along the way you can check out my github if you want to see some of them I think like most people who actually do like AI machine learning work today um, a lot of us didn't get there through taking like courses in college um, or having formal educations in it. We learned online, we took online courses, and we kind of figured it out based on what the online machine learning community was able to, to tell us, and that community has been amazing to me. So I highly recommend it if you want to learn how to program or learn how to do machine learning. I'll include a bunch of different um, resources that I used and resources that I thought were particularly helpful um, in the description box if you're interested in getting some background in that area. Um, and if you have any questions or want any advice, definitely feel free to let me know in the comments below um, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can or refer you somewhere where they can answer your questions better than I can. Otherwise, that's it for this week's video. If you like this kind of vloggy content, um, you can let me know by subscribing and smashing that like button. We'll be back to our more typical non-vlog content next week. Um, this vlog was more so because I've been traveling for all week um, and will also be traveling next week. And so my schedule's just been crazy busy and finding time to script and film and edit has been a little bit hard. Hopefully this helps anyone starting their journey through AI. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.